let's start with the technical questions can you tell me about uh, what is a two stage air compressor uh, in two stage uh, there are uh, two compressor one is a high pressure compressor and low pressure compressor and uh, this is used uh, on board ship to uh, uh, for uh, we can use it for uh, various applications like uh, Uh, compressed air are used uh, to uh, run the main engine and auxiliary engines and uh, in two stage compressor uh, there is there is a, a intercooler between them to reduce the temperature and uh, in, all, in two stage we can uh, means uh, re, uh, reduce the power uh, consumed to run okay. the compressor okay man so you did answer the points which was i, I was expecting but your answer is, needs to be in a structured way so like uh, you said uh, two compressors are there there are not two compressors there is only one compressor but there are two stages okay so when you say so th th there is a low pressure uh, low pressure stage and high pressure stage so <clears throat> initially when the air comes it is compressed to a low intermediate pressure then it goes to an intercooler where since the temperature has increased we have to reduce the temperature after reducing the temperature then we send the air to the next stage uh, to and then compressed in the second compressed in the second stage and then deliver it to the air bottle yeah. and why two stage that you told that it reduces the work done and all okay so you you just need to be in a structured way and remember these points there are no two compressors only one compressor is there and uh, like two stages are there okay that is two stage air compression okay, okay. do you know uh, like the can you, do you have a paper and a pencil with you yeah yeah can you can you draw the pv diagram for a two stage air compressor pv diagram yes yeah okay draw i'll show it uh, right now or after com after i complete after you complete means you draw it you draw it on the paper and then you show me okay so i can explain uh, you yeah yeah sure sure explain so this is uh, from point 1 to 2 there is a uh, polytopic compression in low pressure compressor 
where uh, the pressure increases from point 0.1 to point 0.2 and from point 0.2 to point 0.3 there is an intercooling effect at constant pressure so point 0.2 to point 0.3 and here we and from point 0.3 to point 0.4 there is compression in the next means second stage compression takes place from point 0.3 to point 0.4 where again the pressure increases uh, and from point 0.4 to point 0.5 so there is the point 5 uh, the uh, means the uh, air is stored in the air bottle and we can see this area we have saved the work so we can uh, save work in two stage compression by intercooling effect okay now this is the graph that you have drawn na that this is for then ideal case when there is no clearance volume okay yeah, yeah. This is for a no clearance volume, so uh, yeah. So you know how to draw it for uh, this thing clearance volume also. Do you know that? No. Yeah. Yeah, I know that means uh, I have to shift in the right side. Yeah, yeah. Then you have to draw it a single curve. Okay. So you know about yeah. that also. Then um, what is the this thing size difference between uh, the first stage compressor and the second stage compressor? size difference is there is there a difference in the size of the two stages like if if i am taking a reciprocating compressor so in the st the the size of the cylinder of the first engine and the size of the cylinder of the second engine is there any difference or are they are of the same size no in uh, first stage the size of cylinder is more as compared to second stage okay good uh, and uh, what about the condition to obtain uh, like uh, perfect uh, this thing uh, to to get minimum work what is the intermediate pressure what must be the intermediate pressure so that minimum work is uh, required for compression the, you are you are talking about perfect intercooling right yeah yeah so when the, the uh, when the temperature of air coming out of the intercooler uh, is equal to the inlet temperature inlet temperature of the air means like atmospheric air then it, it is not uh, equal because due to ineffectiveness of the yeah that is the case but my question is my question is what should be the intermediate pressure what should be the intermediate be, pressure yeah it should be uh, it should be equal means p3 pressure should be equal to p1 p3 pressure means, uh, atmospheric Atmospheric pressure which no, enters no, 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 uh, no. P three is your final pressure, na? So how it will be equal to P one pressure? Yeah, it will not be equal, but it will uh, be uh, means similar to means uh, it will the value will be no no uh, somehow no see P one P one is your initial pressure in which you, like you are yeah. the sucking the air in the compressor, then you will get compressed yeah. to a com intermediate pressure which is P two pressure, okay. and then this intermediate pressure gas will be suction for the next next stage of the compressor okay and then okay. in next stage you will compress it to pressure p3 which will be higher pressure that pressure in at that pressure you will store sorry, it in I the air about, bottle sorry i was talking about the temperature ha okay. t3 equal to t1 no, no, i am talking a pressure what should be the intermediate pressure okay i'll tell intermediate pressure must be square root of the initial pressure and the final pressure for perf for work uh, like um, this thing for minimum work okay so p2 is yeah. equals to square root of p1 into p3 p2 is equal to square, square root of p1 into p3 my task interviewer they haven't asked yet but my task okay p1 into p3 ha right? square root of p1 into p3 okay okay and uh, okay, okay. yeah and uh, can you tell me the uses of compressed air on board ship uh they are used for cleaning filters and uh, uh they are used to run uh, main engine and auxiliary engines to run the main engine uh, sorry to uh, supply compressed air to uh, main engine and auxiliary engine mm, why do you want to supply air to main engine uh, for combustion main reason is the starting of the this thing engine during the starting of the engine ah, you need to planking. yeah yeah so during this so the, the, the reason can be one for the starting during the starting of the main engine that time you need compressed air 
then as you told about cleaning then um, then compressors are also required in a refrigeration system yeah 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 so yeah you can tell about that all those things okay can you tell me about uh, can you list the boiler mountings uh, yeah boiler mountings first on the top there are uh, safety valves fitted uh, basically uh, uh, spring loaded safety valve or integrated safety valves are there then there is a uh, fusible plug to switch off uh, to off the fire in the furnace and uh, there is a steam stop wall air vent wall blow up cock and uh, there is a water level indicator okay how, how many how many did you tell how many is thing uh, i told 5 uh, to 6 okay so in all there are total 10 uh, 10 this thing so uh, okay. yeah yeah i'll tell you or i see safety valves are there steam pressure gauges safety valves steam pressure gauge air vent cock then uh, uh, steam uh, then steam stop valve four then uh, uh, feed check valve boiler blow down valve okay uh, then scum blow down valve water uh, water level indicator or gauge glass then uh, there is uh, this thing uh, low water level shut down and fusible plug okay so in all total there are 10 10 uh, this okay. thing okay if you want i can send it to you okay what are the the 10 yeah, boiler yeah. mountings okay and uh, can you ta- can you explain me about uh, scum blow down valve and boiler blow down valve uh, so scum blow down uh, scum valve is used to remove the floating debris which is on the top side inside the boiler and the, in the top portion to remove the debris means any contaminants or particles and uh, blow off cock is used to uh, empty the boiler uh, during inspection and uh, also to remove the contaminants or any uh, mud mud like particles to discharge from the boiler okay and where is uh, this scum blow down valve and boiler blow down valve fitted uh, scum valve is uh, scum valve is fitted on the uh, means in uh ahead of the water level indicator and uh, blow off cock is uh, on the bottom of the boiler is a uh, in the okay see scum, you can uh, say you can uh, you can say about scum valve na boiler blow down valve you said it is okay boiler blow down valve at the bottom of the boiler okay scum blow down valve either you can say it is installed in the uh, this thing steam uh, sorry scum blow down valve is installed in the steam drum or you can say at the interface of the water and the steam better you say it is installed in the uh, this thing uh, steam drum and boiler blow down valve is installed in the water drum okay and uh, can you tell me about uh, how water movement takes place between steam drum and water drum Uh, it takes place uh, due to natural circulation uh, because uh, as the temperature uh, in the uh, water drum in- increases the density of water decreases and we and the hot water passes uh, upward through the vertical tubes and the cold water pass downwards so due to natural circulation okay natural uh, yeah the, right yeah then uh, <clears throat> what is the what are the this thing uses of steam on board ship uh, the uses uh, there are various uh, uh, uses like heating applications uh, like uh, fuel oil heating oil tank heating and uh, air, air conditioning uh, then uh, for cargo from turbine power generation and uh, it is also used for accommodation and fire fighting systems for fire fighting systems uh, yeah i have read it like what is the use steam i'll check it you I'm see i i am not sure about steam use of steam of steam for fire fighting just see that 
Okay. And uh, this I'll thing you told uh, this thing for heating of fuel. Why do you want to heat the fuel oil? So uh, we want to heat it because uh, in cold regions the temperature of the fuel oil decreases, and uh, we know that uh, cold start for the engines are insufficient and which increases fuel consumption. So when we heat the fuel oil, the engine runs smoothly uh, with less pollution and uh, low fuel consumption. So you mean to say that only in cold regions uh, this thing uh, we heat the fuel oil. What if I am in uh, yeah. say Middle East? There the temperature is uh, normally high. So the then and normally in engine rooms the temperature are always high only. So yeah. then what do you want to say? With there we will use or not to heat the fuel oil? Yeah, we we have to heat it uh, at its proper specified temperature. It's not like that in only cold region we are using. What is the temperature that we what, what what is that like what is the this thing initial density of the uh, heavy fuel oil HFO and uh, to what temperature we heat it and what is its uh, this thing uh, density at that point? The fuel uh, density is uh, about 380 CST and uh, it is heated about 40 degrees Celsius. At 3, 380 centi stokes at what temperature? Mm -hmm. 40 degrees Celsius. Okay. Or 50. Okay. Okay. And oh, oh, to we heat it to? We heat it to like one. We cannot use the, at the, this this thing, na. So to what temperature do we heat it, and what is the like uh, this thing density at? Uh, sorry, viscosity at that point. Viscosity is 380 CHT at uh, 50 degrees Celsius. So we heat, we heat it and use it, na. So to to what temperature do we heat it, and then what is the this thing, uh, this thing, your uh, viscosity then? We heat up to 50 degrees Celsius. No. We heat it to around 130 degrees Celsius, and that uh, this thing, uh, this thing becomes 13 centistokes. How much? Stokes? 13, 13 centi stokes. 13 CST. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll send the pic. I'll send the pic of that to you. In Dreamers package only, it is uh, there written like that. You have gone through the Dreamers package? Yeah, I have not completed it uh, full, but I I have uh, went to half half portion. I have. Okay, I'll send the pic to you. I'll send the photo to you. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so when you, whenever you say na, see see these things. If you say that HFO it is used for, so you should know about it. Just you not you should not say for the sake of it, because whatever you say na, they can cross question you. If 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 it's that a cargo that is COPT also you told. So what is COPT and all? Then you should know about that also. If you are saying that, then you should know about it. They might cross question you. Okay. Okay. Huh. So the year also see you you said that uh, this thing uh, that it is used to fuel and then you should know okay huh, by why do we need we need we need to reduce its viscosity so that it can flow that is why okay so whatever you're saying you I should want, know about it. I wanted to ask one question. Yes yes. We have to heat it uh, up to 50 degrees Celsius then uh, why we. Uh, we no we don't have to heat it up to 50 degrees Celsius. It is at around 50 degrees Celsius. Its viscosity is 380 yeah. stokes. Then we heat it to 130 degrees Celsius, where its viscosity reduces to 13 centi stokes, and then we okay, okay. okay got it okay got it yeah okay okay yeah uh, can you tell me about air vent valve? Yes, uh, air vent valve is uh, made open at the time uh, means when we supply the water in the boiler. We open the air vent valve because to remove, to avoid the air related problems uh, in the piping system and also to avoid the corrosion. Okay. And what other times do you use air vent valve? Mm -hmm. Are if there any other times? The, uh, if suppose uh, in the boiler the <coughs> uh, steam uh, means the quantity of steam is high and if you want to reduce that quantity 
means if you want to compensate with water then we open the air well what no 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 if there is more quantity of steam then why would uh, you waste the steam that you yeah, have generated if there is yes. if there will be excess quantity excess quantity then water. there is then there is safety valve for that na if there is excess quantity the pressure is excess then there is safety valve na yeah so there are couple of reasons for air vent valve one of the reasons is that uh, uh, that during the like when the when you are fitting the filling the water in the boiler during the starting so you want to remove any oxygen or any carbon dioxide all that is there inside the boiler so that there is no uh, there is no corrosion okay like uh, okay. like there can be there will be reaction with the material of the boiler and can be corrosion other reason is that during the emptying of the boiler suppose you have to do some maintenance work okay so you yeah, yeah so then you have to empty the boiler so at that time uh, when you empty the boiler so you open the air vent valve so that the their vacuum is not created It's otherwise vacuum. yeah otherwise vacuum will be created then other uh, one more reason is if the boiler uh, so if like uh, you have stopped the boiler and there is steam formation inside okay uh, steam there is a steam the steam will condense and when the steam condenses so suddenly the volume is reduced around 1700 times okay because there is density difference between the steam and this thing okay uh, water so that is by that time also vacuum can be created so then when the boiler is stopped at that time also air vent valve air vent cock is open you can avoid the third point it is a plus point third point if you say but at least the first two points you should say okay one point you said okay. second point this you also remember about when maintenance and all is done then uh, can you tell me the difference between uh, uh, a water tube boiler and a fire tube boiler in water tube boilers uh, the water circulates through the tubes and in uh, and uh, hot flue gases are surrounded by the tubes and in fire tube boilers Uh, the hot flue gases passes through the tubes and water is surrounded by the tubes and uh, water tube boilers are basically high pressure boilers and fire tube boilers are comparative comparatively low pressure boilers and uh, water tube boilers are be, uh, widely used in gas carriers uh, to heat the fuel oil and uh, and the fire tube boilers are used Uh, on bulk carriers car carriers containers because we do not need much quantity of steam at high pressure <coughs> you said that in gas carriers that you have to heat the fuel oil i'm not sure about that yeah, are you sure about the uh, yeah i have read it somewhere okay i'll uh, send you the point of differences that uh, i have made okay you go through that okay i i'm not sure about this thing the fuel or it is used to heat the fuel oil okay so you can also say that the rate of steam generation is high in case of a water tube boiler okay then uh, the rate of steam generation is lower in case of a fire tube boiler then the heat transfer area the heat transfer area like it is more in case of a water tube boiler it is less in case then a water tube boiler has higher efficiency like around 90% it can be used to drive the prime mover what water tube boilers can uh, can be used to drive prime movers because it has high pressure uh, yeah right true like in in thermal power plants and all they are used yeah like it basically it is used as uh, like turbines in turbines So they yeah. drive a turbine, and then the turbine is used to generate the electricity and all. Okay. Okay, fine. Yeah. <coughs> uh, then, can you tell me what is Archimedes' principle? So it states that uh, when a body is wholly or partially immersed in a liquid. and upward force will act on it which is called as buoyant force and and buoyant force is equal to the weight of uh, liquid displayed displaced and uh, if the buoyant force is more than the gravitational force the body will not sink and if the uh, buoyant force is less than the gravitational force then the body will get sink sorry but can you come again about this thing 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेन आर्किमिडीज प्रिंसिपल इज आज ना यू डोंट नीड टू टॉक अबाउट दिस थिंग वॉट विल हैपन इन बॉय एंड फोर्स इज मोर और लेस देन दिस थिंग यू जस्ट से दैट वेन अ बॉडी इज पार फुल्ली और पार्शली सबमर्ज इन अ लिक्विड इट एक्सपीरियंस इज एन अ पोअर्ड थ्रस्ट कॉल्ड द बॉय एंड फोर्स एंड इट इज इक्वल टू द वेट ऑफ द Uh, fluid displaced by the body. That's it. That is what you want to say in Archimedes principle because he asked the principle. You don't uh, give additional this thing. Okay. okay. And can you tell again what did you tell uh, about floating and uh, sinking? Uh, if the buoyant force is uh, more than the gravitational force, then the body will float. And if the buoyant force is less than the gravitational force, then the body will sink. Okay. So this is how does a ship float, right? Yeah. It operates on this principle. Okay. Can you like explain the components of a VCRS? Like uh, explain the VCRS cycle along with its components. So basically, there are four four main principal components like compressor, condenser, expansion valve, and evaporator. so uh, i'll start from the compressor so the low pressure low temperature vapor actually is then coming from the evaporator is compressed in the compressor and get compressed to high pressure high temperature vapor actually then uh, and then is i send to the compressor and this uh, high, low high pressure high temperature vapor actually then enters into the condenser where it reduces the heat Uh, and get convert to high pressure low temperature liquid refrigerant here uh, the phase change latent heat uh, uh, slightly lower displaced. temperature yeah uh, here the uh, means uh, uh, condensation means condensation takes place at isobaric condensation takes place where the pressure remains constant and temperature decreases and this uh, uh, high pressure uh, low temperature liquid refrigerant is supplied to the evaporator through expansion device now as the liquid refrigerant passes through the expansion device its pressure drops and uh, it gets converted into low pressure low temperature liquid vapor mixture and this liquid vapor mixture and from this mixture only the uh, uh, liquid part enters into the evaporator for uh, uh, to, uh, for uh, the for absorbing the uh, heat from the space to be cooled and the vapor which is formed in the during the expansion process is bypass to the comp- uh, is directly sent to the compressor bypassing the evaporator how and uh, it, uh, there is a device called a flash cham- flash chamber which separates this uh, vapor and the liquid refrigerant okay. oh. and uh, after uh, absorbing the heat from the space to be cooled the uh, uh, means the uh, web uh, liquid refrigerant again get convert to vapor and this vapor refrigerant uh, enters into the suction line of compressor and the cycle repeats again and again that's it yeah okay your answer uh, like um, <clears throat> your answer is okay but it can be better okay you told about flash chamber okay good but if even if you skip flash chamber it is okay that is not very important part but you have missed some important very important parts like you didn't talk about uh, this thing uh, sensing bulb and uh, this capillary tube th- which regulates the opening of the thermostatic expansion valve then din- you didn't talk about the dryer okay so these are some important points which you need to mention even if you flash chamber if you, even if you don't mention no, no one will tell you anything but these points are important okay. okay let let me explain you if if i was to if i was asked how will i, I will explain okay so first of all you didn't even okay. say vcrs the full form of the vcrs what is i asked you vcrs so directly start with with the components so like that so vcrs okay. is vapor compression refrigeration system in which the working fluid is a refrigerant in vcrs okay. there are four major components the compressor condenser <coughs> thermostatic expansion valve and the evaporator 
द इन कंप्रेसर आइजेंट्रोपिक कंप्रेसर कंप्रेशन ऑफ द रेफ्रिजरेंट टेक्स प्लेस इन कंडेंसर आइजोबारिक हीट रिजेक्शन टेक्स प्लेस इन कंडेंसर इन थर्मोस्टैटिक एक्सपेंशन वाल्व आइजेंथैल्पिक एक्सपेंशन टेक्स प्लेस एंड इन द इवेपोरेटर आइजोबारिक हीट एब्जॉर्बशन बाय द रेफ्रिजरेंट टेक्स प्लेस एंड दिस इज वेयर द रेफ्रिजरेटिंग इफेक्ट हैपन्स now this was an overview to give a uh, idea of how the flow takes place uh, when low temperature low pressure refrigerant enters the compressor it is compressed to a high temperature high pressure superheated vapor this superheated vapor then passes through the condenser and it loses Uh, and it undergoes condensation and loses its heat to the surrounding medium which can be air or uh, water at the exit of the condenser the refrigerant the the pressure the pressure of the refrigerant is constant but the temperature is slightly lower after that the refrigerant goes to the thermostatic expansion valve but before the thermostatic expansion valve a dryer is placed a dryer is uh, consists of silica gel it uh, absorbs if any moisture is present inside the refrigerant because in uh, the this thing in the thermostatic expansion valve there can uh, there there is a an orifice constricted passage is there so and freezing temperatures are reached so if this moisture reaches there it can choke the passage of the uh, thermostatic expansion valve therefore a dryer is placed before the thermostatic expansion valve and in the thermostatic expansion valve the refrigerant is made to pass through a constricted passage due to which its pressure suddenly drops and due to the drop in pressure some of the liquid refrigerant is converted into vapor by absorbing the latent heat of vaporization of the surrounding liquid this is what causes the temperature of the refrigerant to drop at the exit of the evaporator the temperature and the pressure of the refrigerant is lower and it is in liquid vapor mixture this refrigerant then goes to the evaporator uh, and it absorbs heat from the surrounding like the refrigerated space and by the time it exits the evaporator 100% of the refrigerant is converted into vapor now after the uh, evaporator there is compressor so if due to say less um, less load uh, heating load what happens the, the whole refrigerant the whole of the refrigerant will not be converted into vapor state and if there is some liquid refrigerant it, that enters in the this thing uh, compressor then it can damage the compressor so you should explain about this thing also can you tell can, do you know how does this thing arrangement works sensing bulb uh, thermostatic expansion valve works yeah i am i don't know the exact answer but i will Try, try. Okay, okay. You can explain now. No, I, I am not sure. Okay, so this is very important question. You should uh, look uh, thermo how it works, thermostatic expansion valve works. Maybe I'll send it to you. So see, while while I was explaining, so I talked about how the temperature is lowered, how the pressure is lowered. These are very important questions. Okay, so these questions need you you need to be perfect. Other these practical questions all sometimes it can happen. So they can ask any question. Maybe. okay but these questions are very important which you need to be perfect like how our vcrs cycle works so you see you can watch gyan's gyan's video so he has nicely explained over there uh, okay what the temperature is over there uh, in the evaporator in the condenser okay so at least you see this vcrs cycle because this is a very important question okay so how does vcrs cycle work and uh, what is, what are these things uh, what are the temperature and all okay Do you know what is the ozone depletion potential? Uh, I uh, I know it, but I I am not able to uh, answer that question. Means be confident. Don't worry. Be confident. Whatever you know, now you speak. So see, you you take this as I am the interviewer and you are answering. You will not say like this in the front of the interviewer, right? Okay, I am no, I am not able to recall. Be confident. Whatever you know, you try to speak. so uh, ozone layer depletion means uh, uh, there are uh, means to uh, there are some refrigerants 
uh, which are highly toxic and uh, flammable also so this uh, depletes the ozone layer uh, and uh, so we need uh, safety refrigerants to be used in the uh, daily applications and uh, if the ozone layer depletes then the sun rays will directly uh, strike to the earth which can cause uh, various problems like uh, skin problems and health related issues so ozone okay. uh, so we have to uh, keep in mind that uh, the refrigerant should have uh, low ozone layer depletion uh, okay good good try good try okay you, you you have said what the effect will be if the ozone layer is depleted right so what i'll i'll tell you what is ozone depletion potential so ozone depletion potential is the ability of a refrigerant to destroy the ozone layer as compared to that of r12 same mass of r12 refrigerant okay and this is ozone depletion potential i'll uh, send the photo that that photo to you what is ozone depletion potential another important term is global warming potential global warming potential is the ability of a gas to trap uh, this heat inside the atmosphere as compared to the same mass of carbon dioxide okay, okay. be confident you, uh, it is all about confidence have have a smile okay while answering you should you should you should have a smiling face okay okay can you tell me the working of a four stroke uh, diesel engine yeah there are uh, four strokes uh, so namely suction compression power and exhaust so uh, during the suction stroke the piston travels from pdc to bdc in which uh, uh, the suction is created inside the cylinder uh, which so this uh, reduces the pressure inside the cylinder which draws the atmospheric air in and uh, the suction is created till the piston reaches to the bdc now the suction stroke completes now the compression stroke starts so during compression stroke the piston moves from bdc to tdc where it where the atmospheric air gets compressed to high pressure and high temperature and uh, just before the end of compression uh, stroke there is a fuel injection means fuel is injected into the cylinder uh, and the combustion takes place so during this combustion at high in high pressure high temperature the uh, gas for the gas forces the piston from pdc to bdc and you can say that the, uh, the work is obtained or power is obtained and uh, this power, the excess power which is obtained during the power stroke uh, is stored into the flywheel and uh, this uh, flywheel uh, and this power can be utilized to run the idle stroke uh, like uh, suction compression and exhaust and this completes the uh, uh, compression stroke uh, and the piston which is towards the bdc so before the at before the end of the bdc the exhaust valve opens to release the atmosphere uh, exhaust gases into the atmosphere uh, because uh, the pressure inside the cylinder uh, at the during the uh, at the time of uh, combustion the pressure inside the cylinder increases so this pressure difference makes the exhaust valve to get open and the exhaust gases are released out so that's uh, how the four stroke uh, design engine works Firstly, <clears throat> like uh, when you said the suction and all takes place, so you should tell that inlet valve is open and the suction stroke is there. You should mention that. Then during compression stroke, you should mention that inlet valve is closed and exhaust valve is closed. Okay. Uh, rest, your answer was compression part, suction, suction part, compression part was right. Okay. Then in uh, then in uh, the uh, power stroke there you can add an additional point that uh, 
the temperature inside reaches above the self ignition temperature of diesel and that is why combustion takes place okay and okay. then third point was that okay then and the fourth point in while explaining this exhaust stroke you told that due to the difference in pressure the valve opens this is not correct it the valve opens because the this thing due to the cam movement of the cams right yes, okay it is not yeah. due to the pressure difference it opens it due to the the profile of the cam it opens okay yeah yeah once the exhaust valve opens due to the pressure difference the exhaust gases flow out but the exhaust valve doesn't open because yeah. of the pressure difference that exhaust valve opens because of the cam yeah. okay now so tell me what, yeah okay so be you be you can talk you can un- tell your answers slowly also you don't need to be very fast but you whatever you say na uh, like um, just make sure I that you are not cross question you are trapped okay like now you said now that it d- d- opens because of the difference okay otherwise yeah. most most of the part you explained it well what is a camshaft uh, camshaft uh, are you camshaft are used to uh, open and close the inlet and exhaust valve uh, through cams and it is uh, driven by the crankshafts okay and uh, like uh, by a ro- like a rocker arm arrangement or is there right rocker yeah. arm assembly yeah okay and you can also say that uh, you, you uh, the camshaft keeps the valve like the inlet and the exhaust valve open for the like the required timing okay yeah what is the uh, tappet clearance uh, tappet clearance is uh, provided uh, because Uh, it is uh, it is above the walls there is small gap which is uh, provided to uh, in case of thermal expansion means uh, that uh, that will be that will be if i ask you uh, why it is provided first you tell me what is tappet clearance tappet uh, tappet clearance is uh, uh, the gap which is the uh, means gap which is provided for thermal expansion of the walls and it should be provide it, it is necessary to provide because uh, without uh, the tappet clearance the wall will not sit correctly and it is it, it is provided because because the because due to the uh, because the engine gets heated the wall sh- wall should not be in a fixed uh, you can say in a fixed position so there must be some clearance to uh, move the wall up and down so this provide okay so you can uh, you can say like you said the reason correct the reason why it is provided because thermal expansion will be there the ex- the, ex- the de- temperature of the exhaust gases is high so due to that thermal expansion will be there but actually th- uh, that is the reason and what is tappet clearance tappet clearance is the distance between the like the gap between the valve stem and the rocker arm okay okay so tappet clearance is the distance between the valve stem and the rocker arm and when you are asked that uh, why it is provided then what you explained that is correct okay due to thermal expansion okay what is a turbocharger so turbocharger is uh, like a gas turbine you can say turbo charging i can explain the process of turbo charging yeah go ahead again so turbo charging is a process in which the exhaust gas uh, the energy from the exhaust gas are used to uh, produce mechanical work and this is done with the help of gas turbine and uh, this gas turbine uh, shaft is directly coupled to the centrifugal compressor or blower which uh, draws the atmospheric air in so uh, we can uh, we can use the we can use the waste heat to uh, comp- uh, to compress the atmosphere to compress the atmospheric air and this air is uh, we can supply this air to the scavenge space through passing through the intercooler by reducing the uh, temperature of this uh, air that's why uh, we use turbocharger okay 
but why do you want to compress the air i uh, we, we don't want to compress we we decrease the temperature you are compressing the air yeah in blower we compress after that we uh, reduce the reduce the temperature of the air we compress it because uh, uh, the, the this air is uh, made to pass into the scavenge space and this uh, compressed air uh, blows out the exhaust gases in the cylinder and get uh, filled with the air no see i'll i'll tell see what is the purpose why do you want to compress the air if you if you compress the air what will happen its density will increase right yeah. Hmm. If the density increases, means what? In a given volume, if the density is more, means what? Mass. More mass of air is there. If more mass of is air is there, what will happen? You can burn more amount of fuel, right? If you can burn more amount of fuel, you can produce more power. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you should when you when you are asked turbocharging. So why do we increase? Why why do we use why do we use a turbocharger? Because we want to increase the amount of like air. then you can explain about the working you should know about what is its purpose and how it is how it is achieved otherwise the working okay. and all you told that is okay but the main purpose why we do it is because we want to increase the amount of air that is entered into the cylinder okay okay uh, what are the components of a centrifugal pump and uh, how this thing suction pressure is created and how discharge pressure is created explain these things Uh, first, I will explain the parts of centrifugal pump. So, first of all, there is a uh, casing. Then uh, there is a impeller. And then impeller shaft. Then uh, there is a suction pipe. Then after that, there is a delivery pipe. And uh, there is uh, when when uh, two rings are there. Four rings, two, and there is gland packing, stuffing box, and uh, yeah, that's all I know about the components. And uh, okay. try to remember it. Mode. Try to remember it in a structured way. Like, see, first you said casing, then impeller, then you got to suction pipe, then you got to delivery pipe. Okay, simply you say. Okay. So what are the components? Uh, the the foot valve, strainer. suction pipe impeller mm-hmm. volute casing and delivery pipe and uh, this thing delivery valve okay don't mention about stuffing box and o ring you can mention but if you are very confident you know about it then you will then you say otherwise you will immediately move on to do asking you those things okay, okay. how stuffing box works what is o ring and all then he will go to that point immediately if you mention these things Okay. Try okay. to keep it as simple as possible. Okay. Okay. And then tell me uh, this thing. Uh, how well, does it work? Okay. How does the centrifugal? So first, first, I will uh, tell about the working principle of centrifugal pump. So working uh, centrifugal pump works on the rotodynamic principle, in which the suction is created at the eye of impeller. When impeller imparts centrifugal force to water, uh, it pushes outward from casing to the delivery pipe. so this happens due to so when we suck that uh, some you said radially outwards when it, uh, you said uh, imp- radially outwards casing to the delivery pipe no no i said uh, okay uh, okay uh, I, i missed i think so can you start again can you start again okay so centrifugal pump uh, operates on the rotodynamic principle uh, so operates on the rotodynamic principle in which you can say uh, uh, it works on the principle of centrifugal action okay Okay. Center of gravity. In which the the impeller, in which the suction is created at the eye of impeller, uh, and and the impeller imparts centrifugal force to water, and it pushes the water from casing to the delivery pipe. And this happens due to uh, when we suck the uh, water uh, from the. You said pipe, uh, it the impeller pushes the water to the from the casing to the delivery pipe. Yeah. it pushes outward from casing to the delivery pipe uh, due to 
uh, gradually uh, increasing area the pressure increases and this pressure is pressure energy gets converted into potential energy that's why the uh, water is lifted and this uh, delivered to the delivery pipe okay so it starts uh, when uh, we when the air is when the water is sucked uh, into the suction pipe it uh, uh, passes into the casing due, uh, by suction and uh, due to centrifugal force uh, first the uh, uh, first the uh, kinetic energy is increased in in the of uh, the first the kinetic energy of water increases and as it passes uh, through the volute casing uh, due to the increase gradually increasing area the kinetic energy decreases and uh, the pres pressure increases uh, and as the pressure increases uh, it gets converted into potential energy which makes the liquid to uh, flow in upward direction or in the discharge pipe okay so like see you explained about the the how discharge pressure is created that part was okay but the suction how suction pressure and all is created uh, that was very confusing you did not explain it properly the delay discharge pressure is created you said it more or less correctly because like the high kinetic energy is made to pass through a volute casing of increasing volume so as the volume increases the velocity decreases and by bernoulli's principle since the velocity decreases the pressure energy increases and this is how pressure is created in the delivery pipe so this part you explained it properly okay but in the suction part na that was a little bit uh, confusing so there you can say that when the like the when the impeller when the motor is turned on and the impeller starts rotating inside the casing the impeller imparts kinetic energy to the fluid and it experiences centrifugal force due to which it moves radially outwards from the center that is eye of the impeller to uh, the outlet of the impeller since the fluid is moving radially outwards a vacuum is created at the eye or the center of the impeller and due to the pressure difference the 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 liquid in the sump being at the atmospheric pressure uh, the fluid liquid is sucked inside the suction pipe uh, to the eye of the impeller and into the pump okay so this is how the suction pressure is created so you, you did not mention okay. about vacuum how vacuum is created then how centrifugal force is imparted okay so that all you should say how suction pressure in suction pressure is created you you can t- say like that okay okay discharge pressure was okay and about components what I, what i told you remember that don't uh, talk about uh, the like o rings and all otherwise he will ask you and he might trap you you know what is an o ring uh, yeah it is used i know o ring okay it is used to it is act it acts as a mechanical seal Uh, means uh, it is used to avoid the water to spill out of casing okay so it is not it doesn't act like a mechanical seal it is a part of a mechanical seal okay okay, okay. it is part of a mechanical seal and um, it is circular in cross section okay yeah and uh, do you know what is a wear ring uh, yeah wear ring is uh, there are two types of wear ring of uh, first is impeller wearing and uh, uh, casing wearing and it is used to uh, it is used to reduce the friction between the impeller and the casing by uh, yeah that's it okay so like uh, the two important reasons for wearing is one is it prevents the black back flow of high pressure liquid there is gap firstly impe- wearing is fitted on the impeller okay on the impeller or on a or on the casing and it f- f- fills the gap between the casing and the impeller there is some this thing clearance between in the impeller and the casing right okay yeah so what will happen the uh, the uh, the water which is at high pressure that can flow back through the to the suction side right 
so that is why there is a wearing to prevent the back flow and other thing is it acts like a sacrificial element means what if there is any vibration and all okay so the wear ring will wear and it will not allow the this thing impeller to touch the casing okay and get damaged so okay if wearing is damaged then we can we replace the wear ring okay best is you avoid saying about wear ring oil uh, o ring and all okay try to be as simple as possible just say the this thing the most important basic parts if, even if you talk about the basic parts it is okay uh, if you are not very sure about any parts don't mention it okay, okay.